Hello and welcome to Bobbin Talk. If you want to know how I created all this sequence and how I applied it to my garment, keep watching. This is the video for you. I will show you how you can bring any shape you like, shape that you made, something that you took off the internet, and maybe even have a king cat and bring it as a top stitch. Keep watching. If you're curious to find out how I created the internal lines along which I'm doing the top stitching, then I will link the video in the description. If you already know how to do that, we can just move on and get to the top stitch with creative shapes. Now that I have my internal lines, I am ready to add top stitch to those lines. And let's start the creative process here. So first I would need to go to the object browser, select the top stitching panel, and you can see that I have the default top stitchings that are part of this garment. And also I have already added one of my really fun sequins. That was the one that I created in Illustrator. First, we need to come up here where it says plus add, left click once on that and you will see that a new top stitch would appear. You can immediately change the name of that stop stitch if you know exactly what you would be using. Now here is where the creative process comes. Whatever you created you can bring in as top stitch. Let's go take a look at the property editor. Here you can also change the name. It doesn't matter if you change it here or here octagon sequence and you can see that this name changes on both sides so the type here i'm going to change to texture the offset is really how far away from the internal line will the sequence appear default is 1 16th i'm going to bring it to zero because i want my sequence to lie exactly on top of the line and you'll see what's the difference stitch count this relates to how many different stitches you have next to each other so on this internal line, I can pile up up to five different stitches. That means I can have a sequence, I can have a zigzag line next to it, I can have an overlock or anything else, a combination of different things. And you can save that as one top stitch. Next, the shape, I will create a custom shape. But if you take a look here under material, basic parameters, if this is closed, just left click once to open it. You can see the default texture here is this regular top stitch as you know it. And we have one of them. So first of all, I want to make this a metallic. Metal is for render only, but you would still see it here in the 3D window. Now the texture, I am going to left click once on the delete button, which is this trash can, and I'm going to bring my own. So in order to bring my own, I'm going to left click once on the four squares here, and that will open up my folder. So let's take a look here. This was a hologram sequence that I created from a larger picture. I selected the individual sequence and I created a transparent background. So I'm going to select that one and add it to my texture. And this will be my now individual top stitch. The sequence becomes the new individual stitch. I am ready to use this sequence. I don't have a color here because my sequence already has a color. And you can see here that the length for stitches per inch went to not available. That is because I have a predetermined size here. So let's see what this looks like. I'm going to come to my outfit and I'm going to take the segment top stitch tool, which is shortcut K. I'm going to left click once to have that tool in my hand. I have my new hologram sequence here selected. And all I have to do here is left click on the internal line that I want to apply this top stitch to. So I'm going to do it actually in the 2D window. Left click once and you can see it immediately appear in the 3D window. I selected here metallic for the material. So it already gives me a bit of shine here. Now we are seeing the internal lines here. If you don't want to see the internal lines, all you have to do is come to the tools here, find out where show internal lines is and just deactivate it. And you can see that all we see here is our sequence. I can still see the internal lines on my patterns in the 2D windows, but here I am just seeing the sequence that I'm applying. And this is where the fun begins. So let's see now what else can we bring in here and what other shapes have I created. So I'm going to use this one that I have already. This one I created to be quarter of an inch. And 
let's see what happens if I just apply it on the line. You can see that here length is not available and that's fine because it will calculate exactly what this length is. I know I did it at quarter of an inch. I could do stitches per inch four if I had to designate something. Now here I want to show you something. If you remember on this file, I was really, really close to the edge and you can see how the sequence is very close to each other. For the blue ones, there is a little bit of distance from the edge of the sequence to the edge of the file so that you can see that this is now showing a little bit of distance. And obviously from here on, you can bring any shape that you like. Let's see what else I have here. So let's have some fun. I'm gonna dump this texture and I'm gonna bring my own texture and let's see what else I have in this file. Make sure that here you're selecting a PNG file, not the JPEG, as the JPEG would have the white background, the PNG would have no background or transparent background. So this is now my navy hexagon. So I'm gonna change the name here so you know exactly what that is. And let me just bring a couple of more of these and you can get super creative here. I have some really fun images. You can literally take any shape that you want. So for example here, I saw this actual sequence of cat shapes and I put two of them next to each other together so they will string along in the two colors one after the other. So I'm gonna bring that as a sequence. So you could have two or more shapes together and I can see that this one is ready. I'm gonna add one more here. I also thought, hey, why not take an actual image of a cat and create a sequence out of an actual cat image. So I deleted the background here. I'm going to call this King Cat, let's say, because he has a crown. So now let's see how this can be applied on my garment. I'm going to start with the hexagon that I have here. I'm going to select my segment top stitch and I'm going to apply it. And you can see that these shapes are bigger. So it's applying them bigger on the garment. Let's select the silver one. I think that was a different size. That was even bigger and you can see that it's appearing even bigger and it's actually overlapping. So maybe I don't want to put it up on top there. Maybe I just want to have it on the lines to here. And I didn't select metallic here. So what I can do is I can come back here and instead of fabric mat, I'm going to also put metal, but you could select anything else that you like here. So for example, let's say silk satin. So that would give it a satiny look instead of this super shiny look. Now let's take a look and see what the top stitch is. The real cat actually looks like. I'm going to come to my edit pattern tool, going to offset this internal line. I'm going to do just one line and I'm going to bring it up a little bit higher. So here I'm going to come to top stitch, select the king cat and just place two of those cats right there. That's it. I got my cats. You can see that almost looks like patch graphic, but it is placing it along the internal lines. So I'm just going to grab this line and place her a little bit lower or maybe a little bit higher and see if that would give me a better look. I could also curve the line that will edit the image a little bit, but it might be better. So I want the cat to be a little bit closer to the middle, not so close to the edges. And I'm very happy with this placement right now. So that is my king cat is top stitch in the back. And let's see what else we can do on the bottom. So I'm going to select that top stitch and I'm going to place it here. And you can see that it actually appeared upside down. Let's see if I can also place it here. Okay, here it's placing the way I would like it. The only issue that I have here right now is that my cats here or my sequence cats here is upside down and I'm not happy with that. So how I can fix that is taking a look at how I created the internal line and where I offset the line from, if I offset it from the bottom or the top. So let's take a look. Um, since we have nothing in the back, I'm going to create a couple of offset lines here. So I'm going to delete these internal lines. Let's create them from the top. Edit pattern tool in my hand. Right click on the top. Offset as internal line. I'm going to leave it at 1.5. Click OK. And let's place the top stitch here. And you can see that the cats are upside down. So I'm going to delete this line. And this one I'm going to offset from the bottom. So I'm going to offset as internal line and then place my sequence. And you can see that the cats are now aligned the other way. 
So it really matters if you're offsetting the line from the top and the bottom, or alternatively, you can just create your own line and then place them however you like. For example, I'm going to come to internal polygon line and I'm going to just create arbitrary line, then come to my top stitch of the cats and just place them. And you can see that they're placed correctly. Keep in mind that you could add different top stitches on different segments of the path, or you can use the free top stitching tool to mix and match in a way the top stitching. So let's say I'm done with the cats here. I can select this hexagon navy color and then add that to the very next segment. And you can see that it appears along the internal line right after the cat. I could also, again, select just the free top stitch and let's say I grab the purple orange and I can choose only portion of the path and that will place it only on portion and you can see that I started a little bit lower so that's where it's starting it here you could also overlap this one had an offset that is more than zero for example if this offset is an eighth of an inch I can come back with this one and go over the same line with the segment and it will place it on top of it but see how middle of it is offset a little bit and I can come back here and correct that offset to be let's say one inch and you see how it pushed it away an inch so I'm actually going to bring that a little bit closer until I'm happy with the distance but it will offset all of it so anywhere I've used this particular top stitch it will offset with whatever I change here so if I want this to be a new top stitch that has let's say both of these what I need to do is select it copy it and now give it a different offset and use that again so for this one i'm going to bring it back to offset zero now if i want to apply the new one that has a bigger offset i'm going to select this one it has an offset of five eighths i could place it on a different line let's say on this one i'm going to also add it here i could also come here with the edit top stitch tool select particular top stitch and delete just that one top stitch obviously i did this in two segments so i deleted only the segment and selected you could truly create any combination that you like and if you wanted to create a top stitch that has more than one stitches here like this example here around the elbow all you have to do is create more than one stitch count so in the property editor under stitch count right here there's a drop down menu you can select up to five different stitches that are included in your top stitch and of course for each one of them you can add your own texture your own color anything that you like here you would go to each specific one create the texture and choose the material and everything else so let's see how we do that click on the plus add button and that's the new one give it a new name and then here under property editor stitch count left click once and select as many as five different counts of different stitches let's say I select four and now for each one i will go to the tab of that specific one and add the options that i would like obviously that includes images or existing stitches that are part of the Clo library. And this gives you the freedom to create whatever you like in terms of images, stitching, and anything else that you like. Thank you for watching Bobbin Talk. I appreciate your viewership. I appreciate your interest. Please feel free to ask any questions, add any comments, and let me know what else you would like to see on this channel.